very good morning to all of you. Morning. Here I am again. It seems I've been getting very good reviews <laughs> because Reverend Harada says we can send Ron more often now because they like him. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you very, very much for giving me the opportunity to share the Dharma with you. Um, it's a very busy morning at OCBC, which is why Alice, my wife, can't be here, but she does send her best to all of you. Um, Reverend Harada is pioneering his new class from uh, practical level Buddhism to truth level Buddhism, which he will be doing next Saturday here at Vista. I, I hope he can take advantage of it. I'm going to miss it today, so I told Alice, listen very carefully, take good, take good notes. <coughs> so a couple of weeks ago, we've been getting a lot of people knocking on our door, mostly political people. I'm sure you're experiencing the same down here. And uh, one morning, uh, knock, 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 came on the door. I said, here I go again. Political people again. And I opened the door, and there were two lovely young ladies standing there. They didn't look like politicians, because they had a briefcase and a handful of pamphlets. And they were from the Jehovah's Witness. And I said, oh, how refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> and we started talking. And I said, before you go any further, um, I just want to let you know that um, I belong to a Buddhist temple, Orange County Buddhist Church. And they heard temple and church, and they got a little confused there. Said, well, well, why do you call it a church? If you, is this a temple, or is it really a temple? And then you call it a church? And I said, well, it's a long story. You don't really have that much time here. <laughs> Can we ask you a couple of questions? I said, sure, sure. We've always been curious by the meaning of a Buddhist. Well, what, what is a Buddhist? I said, hmm, very good question. And your second question? <laughs> well, we were just wondering, does Buddhism have anything to say about bullying? Oh. Bullying, where did that come from? And I said, you know, <laughs> We really don't have that much time to uh, go through it. Uh, I can give you a very high level explanation of the first question. Uh, the second question kind of threw me for a loop. And I knew I was coming to Vista in a couple of weeks, and so I said, hmm, that might make some good material for the Dharma message. And so I thanked my two little Jehovah Witnesses for giving me the uh, subject matter for this morning's Dharma talk. <laughs> What is a Buddhist? Well, here are my thoughts on what is a Buddhist. To me, never having been to Japan and only meeting uh, people from Japan who come here, either participate in ministry or move here, my reflections are on American style Buddhism. And I often notice, and I include myself, that Americans, like if they're Buddhists, like to identify themselves by one of three descriptions. I am a Buddhist. I am a practicing Buddhist. And my favorite, and one I kind of coin, is I'm a Buddhist appreciator. <laughs> because I don't consider myself a Buddhist. And to be a practicing Buddhist, although I do wear a robe, <coughs> I only practice it on Sundays, truthfully. And on Wednesdays when I have to when I'm assigned <laughs> meditation. All the other days, I'm just an ordinary human being. An ordinary, foolish, and evil person. So, I'm a Buddhist appreciator. And all of those are fine, except I often have mixed feelings when I hear that response from my peers. I am a Buddhist. Why is that? Well, one feeling is admiration, because I hear them 
as taking Buddhism very seriously when they say, I am a Buddhist or I'm a practicing Buddhist. They're taking it seriously. After all, no one is born a Buddhist, especially in the West, unlike in Japan, where it is part of the culture and their worldview. But I sometimes wonder if there was a sense of religious pride, arrogance, or even competition or rivalry with other cultures and religions, which is, in Buddhism, very unjustified. And why is that? Because as Buddhists, we are cautioned to not become attached to labels, identity, self-love, or self-enhancement. So it is okay to identify yourself as a Buddhist? Certainly, so long as we have a clear idea of our intention, our worldview towards other cultures and religions. I'm gonna read a quote to you from one of my most inspirational teachers, um, Dr. Nobo Haneda. I'm sure a lot of you have had the opportunity to listen to Dr. Haneda. Quote, Buddhism means realizing an all-embracing attitude, nothing else. It means realizing a broad and empty mind that can encompass all. It means realizing a position in which I can learn and appreciate all kinds of things. A position in which I do not assume any relative or antagonistic relationships with them. Unquote. I want to give you an example. Imagine, use your imagination, a large basket, and inside that basket are fruits. Fruits of all kinds, pears, apples, oranges, bananas, peaches. Imagine that each fruit represents a religion, and that each fruit has a creed or a doctrine or a dogma, which can be compared to each other. However, Buddhism is not one of those fruits because Buddhism is the basket. And you cannot compare a basket to a fruit. Buddhism has no creed, no doctrine. It simply encompasses and embraces the entire universe. It embraces all religions and embraces all the fruits. So having that image in your head of the fruits in the basket I want to read you another quote from Haneda Sensei. He says, don't become a fruit in the basket. Become the basket. Appreciate all kinds of fruits in the basket. Buddhism is appreciating all kinds of teachers and teachings. There are so many wonderful teachers and teachings in the world. Let's forget labels such as Christianity, Islam, and so forth. Let's forget even labels such as Buddhism, Zen, or Shin. Let us study from all. We are, after all, all human beings. We share the same human suffering and the same human aspirations. And we do not, we do not have to be trapped by superficial labels and identity. For me, that is a very logical and clear and precise definition of what is a Buddhist. Now you can see why I didn't have time to explain that to my little friends of Jehovah Witnesses. Um, I give them a very high level synopsis of that. So now for the second question. How does Buddhism deal with bullying? Well. And these are my thoughts only because it's a very, very touchy and difficult subject. First, we have to realize that bullying is a universal experience. We all have experienced being on the receiving end of verbal and or physical abuse due to our appearance and or cultural traits 
And of course, not to mention thanks and no thanks to social media platforms, electronic messaging assaults. Bullying is a very difficult topic, and it's not just about physical or emotional abuse. There is bullying in all realms of our interactions with everybody, in politics, in business, certainly in religion. We have to be very, very careful that we do not undertake a stance of superiority just because we think we have a better philosophy or a better religion than someone else. So I think we can begin with the thought that no one is born, no one is born wanting to be a bully. No one is born wanting to be a Christian or a Buddhist. We all learned it. And if we learn bullying, we can unlearn it. It is ironic, in my opinion, that we live in supposedly all embracing acceptance and awareness of diverse cultural and economic differences. But I see way too much intolerance of others who do not conform, who do not think, who do not believe, or talk, or walk, and behave in order to be considered as one of us. So where to start? From a Buddhist viewpoint, let's begin with to see and understand bullying as a form of suffering. The person who is in front of you insulting or abusing you, that person is hurting. They're angry. And they need our compassion much more than our criticism. Okay, so we can just maybe a little bit see the suffering. And what's next after that? Well, protect yourself. Avoid potential bullying environments, such as being alone in school hallways, or playgrounds, or cafeterias, or walking to and from school. Of course, this applies to children. But again, who walks to and from school nowadays? <laughs> because you got big friendly pe people to escort and protect you because they pick you up in the car. But if you happen to want to ride your bike or walk, just be aware of particular environments that are conducive for a bully to approach you. Next, well, maybe try applying kindness it just might, it just might diffuse the situation. I have my doubts, but it just might. Because kindness is not always reliable. So in the end, learn to cut off. By cut off, I mean do not respond, but walk or run away from aggressive situations. These four actions come from basic Buddhist philosophy that teaches, number one, insight, see the suffering, preservation of life, protect the self, compassion, kindness, and self-discipline to be able to cut off, to walk away when you're dealing with others. So to conclude a very difficult topic on bullying, some people just don't like the way others shine. And so they sadly try to dim their light, shut them down, and silence them. When other people insult, criticize, shame, or judge us through pessimistic eyes, they are attempting to protect their own unresolved thoughts and feelings and emotions or beliefs. Other people's condemnations belong to them alone. We have the choice as to whether or not we are willing to accept them. 
I want to share with you a very ancient parable or story on how Buddha dealt with criticism. Now, according to the story, Buddha was known as a man who could not be provoked to anger or hostility. So a man traveled hundreds of miles to test the Buddha's reputation. And when he found the Buddha, he immediately began to criticize everything he could. He insulted him. He challenged him. He did everything he could to offend Buddha. But Buddha was unperturbed. In fact, the Buddha said, may I ask you a question? Of course, the man responded. And Buddha said, if someone offers you a gift and you decline to accept it, to whom then does it belong? And the man said, why it belongs to the person who offered it. And Buddha smiled, that is correct. So if I decline to accept your abuse, does it not then still belong to you? <laughs> <laughs> to me, that is probably the best answer I can come up with to the question, how does Buddhism deal with bullying? Probably not the most practical answer, but at least it gives us a philosophical base if we take the right action. Join me in Gacho. Namo Amida.